Hi, today we'll be running a filtration experiment. Mussels feed by filtrating particles out of the seawater. This experiment is designed to quantify the rate at which mussels filtrate particles over time. Uh, so mussels, they, they filter by using siphons. The inhalant siphon here is the larger of the two. It also includes the gill structure. After the mussel has taken the water in and the captured particles, it ejects the remaining small particles in water through the exhalant siphon here on the other side. These are the supplies you need for setting up a filtration experiment. Here we have our two tanks. One tank is a control tank. There's no mussels in that one. The other tank has some mussels in it. In both tanks, we have the same volume of seawater. And here, two liters of seawater in each tank. We also have air pumping into the tanks. This is to help circulate the water around the tank. We have our stars of the show, our mussels. The other supplies we need for our experiment, different types of food sources for the mussels to use. One is dry yeast or a dry algae, but any type of digestible particle. You'll need a thermometer, some means to measure the salinity of the water. This is a refractometer. You need a pipetter of some sort to take samples from the water. Also something to store your samples in before you measure them. A scalpel to make your dissections after the experiment. Although it's not here, we have to use a microscope in order to quantify the number of particles in the water. We also use this. This is a hemocytometer. Lastly, we need a scale to measure the weight of our muscle tissue. Oh, there's one more thing. In order to measure the shell length, we need something like a ruler or calipers to measure the shell length. When conducting experiments like this, it's important to be careful with our measurement techniques and to be as precise as possible. This is in order to maintain experimental quality and to compare results between experiments. But one thing to consider before we start is that muscles need to be comfortable in their environment in order to give us the proper filtration rate. If muscles are stressed out, they don't really filter that well. So we typically put the muscles in the water some hours before we start the experiment so they can become more comfortable, acclimate to their environment. It's also important not to move the table around, that further stresses out the muscles. So keep them comfortable and don't touch too much. To start the experiment, I've prepared some algae solutions. I've made these algae solutions from an algae powder and mixing it with filtered seawater at a known concentration. And now we start. And as a filtration rate experiment, I need to keep track of time. So I'll use my phone to start the timer. During the experiment, the filtration period, I'll take five different samples. One at the beginning, at zero. One at five minutes, 10, 15, and 20. The 20 minutes are up now, and we can see that there has been a filtration effect. So now that I have my samples here, I'll take the measurements in the microscope, and I get my two important uh, variables for the filtration rate, which is the particle count, the concentration of particles in each of these samples, the time point, and then I'll normalize that filtration rate that I can derive from those two variables by taking the dry weight of the muscle tissue. And this requires a dissection. So I'll quickly show you how to dissect the muscle. I'll take each muscle out, take its shell length, and then dissect the muscle tissue from the shell, dry that, and then weigh that dry weight. It eliminates the variability in water content or tissue size between muscles. Oh, 
So at the end of the experiment, you should have a number of data points. First, your volume of water, the temperature of the water, salinity, the number of muscles that were actively filtering during the experiment, particle concentration over time, your time points, and the muscle biometrics, namely the shell length and the dry weight of the tissue. Now that I have my experimental results, I can share them with the larger scientific community. Uh, you can do the same. And this is what we call community-based science, where we can generate large data sets across many different experiments. And this is useful for scientists like myself, or like yourself, to look at the tendencies or other types of phenomena that emerge from these large data sets that will be more difficult for us to, to see in these smaller based experiments on our own. Okay, so that was it, and have fun with your experiment. Den her video er en del af et undervisningsmateriale, og du kan finde mere information på verdensmålene.dk.